There is truly no feeling of joy and recognition like when you see someone on the big screen wearing a hijab or praying. But when was the last time you actually related to a Muslim character? Here's how to not do representation. Trope number one, hijabis taking off their hijab for a boy. This movie trope is the most basic, most popular, and most problematic. Hijabis find bizarre ways to take off their hijab in countless dramas, from Quantico to Hala to Grey's Anatomy to Netflix's Elite. This idea suggests that the hijab is oppressive in all forms, and Muslim women are in need of saving from their lifestyle of modesty. Usually, the savior is a white man. Muslim women like me choose to wear the hijab. Many women wear it for different reasons, but ultimately we do it to show our faith. This is not something we need to be freed from. It frees us. Trope number two. All Muslim countries are in desperate need of white saviors. Muslim countries are not yellow stained and filled with terrorists at every corner. Why does Hollywood continue to portray Muslim majority countries as war torn and militia based? Every country has stories and cultures of their own, as beautiful as the people who live there. When was the last time you saw a movie about a Muslim majority country that was authentically portrayed? No one? Not you? How about you? Yeah, no, me neither. I don't know. This movie trope is very discreet and you may not have even noticed it before. American films tend to add a yellow filter over their shots when they depict countries stereotyped as impoverished, polluted, or war zoned. Like in Iron Man 3, when Iron Man heroically frees Naqabi women in a Middle Eastern sweatshop, it's pretty obvious there wasn't a Naqabi in the writer's room. Trope number three, Muslims are all Arab and barbaric. This movie trope stereotypically depicts Muslims as Arab, barbaric, backwards, and in need of transformation. These tropes all originate from Orientalism. Orientalism is how Western societies look at Asian and especially Arab societies as unmodern. A primary framework used to justify colonization, Orientalism's ramifications are found in every corner of our world. Disney's Aladdin, for example, the Arabian Nights opening song literally sings, it's barbaric, but hey, it's home. Along with exotifying and stereotyping nearly every woman in the film, and yes, the entire plot does surround Jasmine's inability to choose who she wants to marry, something Islamic law explicitly forbids and a misconception that Muslim women constantly have to fight. The merging of cultures and multiple identities into one pot ends up generalizing Muslims and brown communities. In post 9-11 era, America found it easy to fall into Islamophobic beliefs because of the way Orientalism was already rooted into Western consciousness. Trope number four, Muslim children are forced into Islam. Younger kids can have religious ideologies of their own. There are nearly two billion of us and we're the fastest growing religion in the world. So why is it so impossible to find Muslim stories about Muslims who actually like their deen? This is present in Hala as well. When her mother frequently refers to her loss of Islamic values and complains that she won't wake up for Fajr. Hala herself agonizes over her lack of freedom at every turn. She literally tells her white, non-Muslim classmates, all you've ever known is freedom. She says, you can't make a choice if you never knew you had one. She deadass said that? What the f Girl, Hala, you could choose Islam. <laughs> when are we gonna have a religious narrative that isn't about suffering and restraint and more just about the love of God? Muslim misrepresentation is so commonplace that there's a literal test to determine how fairly Muslims are portrayed. Developed by Riz Ahmed based on a speech he gave in 2017, the Riz test asks five questions about any character who identifies as Muslim. If the answer to the above is yes, then you fail the test. Each new blunder shows why we don't only need more Muslim stories, but why we need Muslims being the one telling the stories. Thank you.